Hello everyone! Today we'll be looking at a really interesting problem from the Harvard MIT Math Tournament Problem of the Week. This problem is a bit of a puzzle because you can go about solving it purely using logic and there is no advanced theory involved. So without further ado, let us take a look at this fun problem. This problem involves an 8x8 square being filled with integers 1 to 64 such that the numbers i and i plus 1 are in adjacent squares for all i from 1 to 64. So for example, you could start with 1 here, and then go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on, going around the square until you write, fill up all 64 numbers. Now what is the minimum possible sum of the 28 numbers in the gray square? So very interesting, you might try and try and fit the numbers 1 to 28 inside here, but you will realize that it's actually not possible. So what is actually the answer? Well, I'm going to tell you that the answer is 416. And rather than providing you a construction that works, I'm going to leave it as a bit of a fun puzzle for you to come up with the construction. But do not worry, if you watch the entire video, uh, the proof of why you cannot get smaller than 416 will give you enough clues to fill up and construct uh, example that gives you 416 and it is still fun enough for you to uh, work on this even after you watch the entire video. So let's take a look at the proof of why uh, you cannot get something smaller than 416 and you get a better idea of how to do your construction. So I'll leave it as a challenge for you at the end of the video. Okay, how do we show that it cannot be smaller than 416? Well, in cases like this, I think one of the classic things to consider is the chessboard coloring or checkerboard color coloring as I would call it. So I'm going to consider a chessboard coloring using red and blue, where blue is in the bottom left corner. So alternating between blue and red. Uh, and I'm just going to put a marker here to remind you the bottom left is chosen to be blue. So the gray part actually has uh, all these on the diagonal here is red and then these are all blue on this diagonal and then red and blue and so on. So you can see that gray part will have 16 red and 12 blues. So you can check this yourself. The key observation is that the numbers will alternate colors in a checker box uh, formation and if you fill up numbers they have to move by adjacent squares. Then uh, they will alternate colors which means that uh, all the uh, numbers of the same odd or even uh, parity will fall on one color. So for example, you could either have all even on red and all odd on blue, or the other case is all the odd are on red and all the even are on blue. Okay, so let's take a look at the first case where all the even on red and all the odd are on blue. Then the smallest sum in this case, actually, if you have 16 red and 12 blue, you realize actually you cannot fit 1 to 28. This is a very direct proof on why fitting all 1 to 28 in the gray part doesn't work. But even more than that, you can see that the smaller sum is if you take the, all the numbers from 1 to 24, which fills up 12 blue and 12 red, and then the next 4 reds are the next 4 smallest uh, even numbers. This will already give you a sum of 416. So under case 1, you cannot get a number smaller than 416. Now the fun fact is, I don't actually know if it's possible to achieve 416 under this case, but it doesn't matter in this proof. So maybe you can think about it and try it out yourself. There's no guarantee that there will be a solution. But in either case, we've shown that case 1 has no smaller than 416, but how about case 2? Now case 2 is where things get interesting. Actually, there are a number of sets that can give you a sum smaller than 416. The smallest possible sum you can get is again taking 1 to 24, and then the Next four, uh, the remaining four red squares are the next four odd numbers, which are 25, 27, 29, 31. This gives you a sum of 412. And of course, you can bump up numbers to get larger copies. So for example, you can also get a set where you bump this up by a value of 2. So change 24 to 26, you get sum 414. Uh, the rest can't really bump up by 2, but 31 can also be bumped up by 2 to get 33. So replace 31 with 33, and you also get a set with sum 414. And if you stare very carefully, there's really not uh, any other things you can do to uh, increase the sum by less than 4. So these are the only possible sets with sum smaller than 416. And we have to show that they are not possible. And fortunately, a common track of logic can be used to 
eliminate all of them. Okay, let's take a look at uh, set A. Now, how would we decide that this cannot be the case? We cannot fill up all the gray squares with these numbers. There must be some special square in this 8x8 that we consider. And the special square is actually the corners. These two white corners here. Now, what is so special about them? Now, if a middle number, by middle I mean not 1 or 64, which means that if you go a few, uh, uh, fill up all the numbers in the chain, uh, the number will be in between. So it must, it must have something before that and something after that. So if a middle number that is not 1 or 64 sit at those corners, let us see how this square even get fills up. To fill it up, you must either enter from here and exit here, or you enter from the left and exit below. So in either case, this is very limited, the way the puffing are uh, past the corners. So if a middle number sits here, it must be a number firstly x that doesn't belong to, a, to the set A. And then either it enters from white and exit gray, or enter from gray and exit white, which means that exactly one of x minus one or x plus one is in the set A. Now you can see why this corner square is very restrictive. If we stare very carefully at the set A, how do we have something that is not an A but exactly one of its neighbors is an A? For example, the number 30 doesn't work because 29 and 31 are both in A. Uh, 25 doesn't work, for example, it's, it's in A itself. Something like uh, 37 doesn't work because 37 is not in A but its neighbors 36 and 38 are both not in A. So if you think very carefully, actually only the number 32 fits this criteria. 32 is not in A, and exactly one of his neighbors, 31 and 33, is in A. So only one possibility for middle x, which means that actually the other corner must contain either 1 or 64. And of course, uh, 1, we want it to be inside the gray square. So this con other corner must be 64. So uh, one of the corners will be 32. The other corner must be 64. That really binds down the possibilities. This same logic applies for the set B. So if you look at B, again, if a middle number, meaning a number that is not 1 or 64, sits in a corner, uh, one of these two corners, then again, it doesn't belong to B and what exactly one of its uh, plus minus 1 numbers is in B. So again, looking at this very carefully, 24 still doesn't fit, for example, because both 23 and 25 are inside the set. So again, thinking through, only 32 works, and which means the other corner must contain 64. Set C is slightly more interesting. So this time, uh, if we want to look for a number not in C, but exactly one of its plus minus one is in C, we have more options actually. This time the number 30 also works, because 30 is not inside, but 29 is and 32 isn't. The number 32 and 34 are also possible candidates. So we have three possible candidates. But actually, we cannot put both corners with uh, these candidates. Because for example, if we put 30 here, and we put 34 here, we cannot possibly travel from 30 to 34 uh, through such a wide distance. So. 30, in the shortest possible way to reach the other corner, you will have to go through like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 numbers. So this corner and this corner needs to have numbers that are at least a difference of 14 apart. So we cannot put 30 and 34 here. So similarly, one of the corners will have one of these options, but the other corner must be 64. So very interesting. We have concluded that in either of these three cases, one corner is 64 and the other corner is either 30, 32 or 34. Without loss of generality, I'm just going to pretend that this is the corner with 64. Uh, it doesn't really matter to the argument. Okay, but what next? Well, now that it is 64, I mean, how about where 63? It cannot be here because we don't want it in the gray square. All these sets don't have 63. So 63 must be above here. Then now let's think about what is this number here. This cell here also has a bit of a corner effect. Cause either it's, uh, if it's a n number, which is 62, then fine. But if it's a middle number, again, its options are very limited. 
as a middle number, it must actually, firstly, it's not in S, but the options to path through it is either uh, this way or this way or the gray, white, gray, right? So regardless of the pathing through that question mark cell, you will have at least one of its neighbors being in the gray cell. So we are looking for X not inside the set, and at least one of its neighbors is in the set. So if we think about it, this means that x must be between 24 to 34. Because if it's smaller than 24, basically in the first place it is in s, so eliminated. If it's bigger than uh, at least 35, then its neighbors, both its neighbors are definitely not in s. So this forces this cell, if it's a middle number, to be between 24 to 34 inclusive. And now we apply what uh, logic we have talked about earlier, which is that if this is 30, 32, 34, minimally it will take how many steps? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, at least 12 steps to reach here. So even in the best case scenario where this is 34 minus 12, this number is at most, uh, it can only be uh, at most 22 if we go downwards. And of course, if we go upwards, it's even worse. So there's no way you can put 24 here because 24 to this cell has a difference of uh, 6, 8, or 10, but you need at least 12 steps to reach here. So not possible to have a middle number here. So the conclusion is this question mark must be 62, must be an end number. So we put 62 and similarly, where 61? 61 cannot be in the gray cell. So 61 must be here. And then we ask, what is this question mark? Again, it has a corner effect. So, but this time it's slightly more tricky. So similarly, this number in the question mark is not in S and at least one of the neighbors is in S. You might think, okay, this again means X is between 24 and 34. But you run into a bit of a trouble. If you try to use the same logic, you realize that the number of steps from this corner is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So technically, you could have 34 here. And then in 10 steps, this is 24. So you can move from 24 to 34 with no contradiction. However, let us stare very carefully. 34 is only possible under case C. Remember, the other two cases actually have 32 here. So the only case that works, 34, 24, unfortunately doesn't fit the criteria because 34 only works in KC, but 24 is not allowed under KC as a candidate for X because 24 is inside C. We want something not in the set. So 24 is not allowed under KC, but 34 at this corner is only allowed under KC. So it turns out that our logic still holds in all the possible combinations for this square and this square over the sets A, B, and C, we will not be able to fulfill the 10-step requirement. So once again, this number must be an N number, either 1 or 60. Of course, 1 is in the gray square, so this is 60. And at this point, we actually have enough to reach a contradiction because how do we handle this square? This square, there is no way we can move backwards and go in and exit again, right? So this, this one cannot be a middle number because there's no way to pop into it and out of it. At the same time, we don't want to put the number one here because we want one to be in the gray squares. So this gives a contradiction and that is the end of the very beautiful problem. But remember, don't forget to post your construction for 416. So if you manage to come up with the construction for 416, feel free to comment in the comment section below. But I hope that the proof of the entire problem has given you enough clues of how to possibly construct for 416. So, hope you enjoyed this video and found the problem interesting. Stay tuned for more videos and see you soon.